Okay, so now we move to our second talk. Um, our speaker is Robert Schilling. He is a security architect at Rebos and the maintainer of the Open Titan project. I think we heard about Open Titan quite a lot already on the summit, and now we're very much looking forward to the updates. All right, thank you for the introduction, and I'm honored to have the last talk here at the summit. Um, today I'm talking about Open Titan, specifically about Open Titan Integrated. So let's recap what Open Titan is. Open Titan is an open source silicon root of trust, um, which is fully open source, meaning that RTL, DV, firmware, and all the documentation collateral, this is really under a permissive license available on opentitan.org or on GitHub. Um, it really focuses on high quality open source IPs including DV, which is very important, uh, as you all know. Um, open, open Titan was developed previously as a discrete chip, but this is not necessarily uh, usable for every use case. So we shaped this discrete chip now to an integrated version so that you can place that into your large SOC. On the right, you see a block diagram of Open Titan integrated, the Chilling as the reference implementation that is in the upstream. Uh, and with the highlighted blocks, um, which are new for Open Titan Integrated that Rivas contributed to. So uh, in this talk, I will now talk about a few things that we added such that this is uh, achievable. So one of the first things that we changed is that uh, we thought we need a very controlled and a very uh, isolated communication interface that talks between the SOC and then to the root of trust open title. We basically enforce the principle of uh, least privilege here, uh, meaning that the SOC should not directly access the ROT and vice versa. Also the SOC has typically many different um, address spaces and um, this should be clearly separated. What that means is um, we added a mailbox communication interface so that the SSC never talks to the private memory of the root of trust. So the SSC always has to go through a mailbox, places its message in that mailbox, and then OpenTitan is notified and can read from that. And when it gets a response, it's the same way. OpenTitan places a response, and then the SSC can read from that. Um, this mailbox has many different applications in the design, like debug authorization, or in general, any, any security request to the root of trust. As said, this is really the only interface where um, the SOC can talk to, to the root of trust. On the other way, we have um, a new DMA engine added to the design, uh, where the DMA also has very limited or uh, configurable, configurable limited access to the private memory of OpenTitan. Um, we have two interesting features of this DMA engine added. One is it supports inline hashing, so that when you transfer data um, in and out, you can compute hash, hash values based on SHA-2 on the fly, which is quite handy if you want to verify uh, when you load a code block um, from, from memory. The second thing what we added is what we call a hardware handshake mode, so that you can generically hook up the DMA with any of the LSO devices of OpenTitan, such as UART or SPY. So with a single configuration, with a single configuration of both IP, uh, IPs like the DMA and the SPY device, for example, you can transfer a large chunk of data in and out and can use that in conjunction with the inline hashing, for example. A second new IP that we added uh, very recently is uh, what we call AC, AC ranges or AC control range check, which is an IOPMP-like device that you can place on the TLUL bus. It allows you to uh, filter requests based on addresses, uh, attributes like read, write, or execute, and RACL, which I will talk in a minute. Um, and as said, uh, OpenTitan generally speaking, is really keen about good DV. So all these features that we add to the project, they all come with uh, DV. And there's a very strict sign-off process 
on how to get or release, release a version of, a, of an IP. The second thing that we added uh, and what we see great value in a larger SSC design is the debug and DFT governance. In OpenTitan, we have a lifecycle controller. So there's always a, a, a precise lifecycle of the chip. And this lifecycle for OpenTitan um, drives its own debug access. But what about the rest of the system? Here we added a new mechanism so that OpenTitan is really the steering mechanism that uh, enables debuggability of other parts of your SOC. This happens through a generic scheme where the SOC can request a debug, um, uh, can request debug through a dedicated mailbox, which is available on, on JTAG. And then there's a challenge response, crypto protocol, uh, and if the SOC provides, with the, provides the valid response, then debug can be enabled. OpenTitan distributes then a fault injection hardening, hardened debug policy pass across the system, and then where needed, debug is ungated and can be used. A big thing, what we also added here in OpenTitan is, um, or is, is RACL. So let's imagine OpenTitan is integrated to your SSC. That happens when it's, it's uh, accessed or it's, it's attached to a shared crossbar. OpenTitan, as the root of trust, has access to almost everything, um, and that's good. But what about other hosts in your device? Like this initiator, initiator A, it may have access to this IP1, but it is not allowed to access IP3. That's a valid use case because I'm an initiator one, there might be running some different software with different privileges and so on. Um, and to solve that issue and make a generic solution or provide a generic solution uh, for an integrated use case, uh, we developed RACL, which stands for Register Access Control List. And this provides a differentiated security access uh, for registers. So every register can be accessed with a, different, uh, with a different access control list. This works by assigning um, a role, what we call a role, to every uh, host or processing element in the system. And then at the target IP in front of the registers, we have an, a filter mechanism. Um, this filter mechanism is assigned with a policy which states which role is allowed to access uh, this particular register. And that's differentiated also for read and write. When you do then a request, this role is transmitted along with the bus request and then gets checked uh, before the register access is happening. So that is the basic idea of RACL. We integrated that to OpenTitan um, in a very automated fashion uh, with a single source of truth. Uh, because for security, it's really important that you do not replicate all this information in many different files. So the idea is that you have one configuration that provides RACL for the system. Here we have a machine-readable specification that defines all roles and all policies. And this is an integrator-specific configuration. So you, if you want to integrate OpenTitan, can pro up can provide your own configuration with your own roles, with your own policies. And the second part of the specification is the register mapping, where you, on a per-instance basis, assign policies to the registers. This can be done for, uh, as I said, on a per-instance basis, so that, for example, many different instances of the same IP can have different mappings in the design. So this is all HJSON, and then the SOC generator of OpenTitan is capable to pick those files up and generate the necessary RTL to implement RACL um, for your system. But it's not just RTL that gets generated here. It's much more. It's generating the documentation. You see in your register map which registers are accessible through which uh, policy. And it also creates DV. That's also quite important. Um, 
integrated, uh, for this to be integrated, we added a new IP called Draco Control, uh, which distributes the policies in the, in the system. You can have different domains with different Draco Controls uh, providing different um, policies in the system. This IP also collects error information. So in case Rackle denies a request, this IP catches up uh, with the information, logs that into registers, notifies the ROT, and this can be then read out. All, all IPs now in OpenTitan, they natively support Rackle. So you can, if you want to enable Rackle, can use any IP of OpenTitan. Um, if you don't, then there is no, no overhead. So all of that is gated quite, quite nicely. So this is the things that we added for, for uh, um, OpenTitan integrated as in the upstream uh, reference implementation. But one thing that we also contribute to is in general to the SLC generator of OpenTitan and make it more flexible for other use cases than the um, open source implementations. So OpenTitan has a, a generator called TopGen, and that allows you to take a single configuration file where you lay out your SOC, map IPs to certain addresses, and so on, and use that to generate uh, the RTL design, generate all the crossbars, crossbars, and so on. But this is also just one thing. RTL is sometimes quite easy. The other things, that are the things that matter. There is DV environment that gets generated. There is automated tests that get generated that, uh, that test the connectivity and much more. But also documentation. So you get data sheet like documentation out of this, out, out of this generator. And this allows you to uh, create new designs based on this generator such that you can make a very minimal SOC implementation with just a CPU, memory, crossbars, and so on, and use that maybe as a companion core in your design. Of course, you can create the root of trust with that, but uh, there's more. Um, we also added a new software framework so that the same software, the same tests, can be reused across different tops if they support it. Uh, and you do not have to rewrite things uh, and have it duplicated. So, yeah, with that, I guess I'm at the end of my talk. So, OpenTitan now is really ready to be placed in large SOCs. It allows you to easily integrate that to uh, bigger designs because it has the right communication interfaces. Um, and with these new use cases being integrated into a larger um, system, we saw that there are many other things that, that we need, and they, we added them. But this talk is just a glimpse of what, what has been added or is going to be added. There is full post-quantum computing support. There's DICE support, and we added new entities, uh, logical entities that are needed if you uh, build larger designs. If you're interested in that, go ahead, check it out on opentitan.org. Uh, download it, and if you want, contribute to it. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot, Robert. Are there any questions from the audience? Yep, up there. Uh, hi. Thank you for the presentation. My question is... Um, is OpenTitan only available as a soft IP, or is there any plan also to provide it as a hard IP by any of the partners in the project for mass production? Uh, so far, it's a soft IP. But there is reference implementations to be used on FPGAs, um, but in general, it's a soft, soft IP. Okay, thank you. Okay, right, great. Any more questions? We can take one more, maybe. There's any... All right, then. Thanks again, Robert. Very nice talk. Thank you.